We are three women in our late 20s who have worked everywhere from headquarters to dealing with complex emergencies in the deep field across nearly every continent. We are experts in our lines of work, and we have all been subjected to repeated instances of UAL harassment and violence by men at work. The UN, NGOs, donors, we've worked for them all, and every situation has involved some level of UAL harassment or UAL violence on the part of our male colleagues. We're the education advisor you forced to have oral after driving us home one evening when we were in no position to fight back who you ran from when we saw each other years later because even you knew that what you did was reprehensible and, yes, criminal. A few weeks after the assault, you received a pin from the agency for your decades of service. Congratulations. We're the water and sanitation advisor you grabbed and raped as we walked to the latrine. We're the fundraiser you warned to stop discussing experiences of UAL harassment at the hands of a senior colleague with other women because talking about his behavior violated the code of conduct. We're the reporting officer who you told over lunch, with the rest of our team present, that you wouldn't kick out of bed. We're the woman you supervised who was so scared to be in the same room as you that we had to self-medicate before having our weekly only on one meeting the woman you propositioned for as a form of stress relief and to blow off some steam the woman you promised a job if we slept with you the woman who was so scared by your violent temperament and unwanted UAL advances that we slept between our bed and our wall, clutching a cricket bat for safety. Report the Abuse, a brilliant advocacy organization on UAL assault in the humanitarian field, found that 87% of respondents to a survey knew a colleague who had experienced UAL violence in the course of their humanitarian work, while 41% reported having witnessed an incident of UAL violence against a colleague, and 72% were survivors of UAL violence. What makes female humanitarians particularly vulnerable to abuse is the fact that we work, socialize, and live with our coworkers. We live in volatile environments where laws and rules are broken regularly, and expatriates can often act with impunity. We're far removed from normal society, and some men seem to be emboldened to behave in ways they never would at home. In many places where we work, legal justice and accountability rarely occur because the structures simply do not exist. We have been let down by agency counselors and investigators who have warned us that, sure, we could report the cases or make accusations of UAL assaults and harassment if we chose to, but at our young age, we should know that this would be likely to keep us from ever building a long career. The men involved are moved to another duty station, sometimes with the same organization, sometimes with a new one, with no ramifications. Some are even given promotions. It's virtually unheard of for organizations to protect survivors, to properly investigate and punish the guilty, even when irrefutable evidence of wrongdoing is presented. It's telling that Report the Abuse, despite doing vital work on the topic, has now ceased operations due to a lack of funding. Humanitarian donors, the UN, and NGOs talk a lot about ending impunity in the culture of abuse in our jobs, but when the time comes to act on it, nothing happens. Major NGOs are now in the spotlight. There's talk of parliamentary hearings that abuse will no longer be condoned and covered up. But we're willing to bet our NGO salaries that not a single thing will happen. But something has to change, and it has to change now. We are the backbone of this sector, willing to work in the Maiduguris, Kabuls, Sanaz, and Mosuls of the world, and we have enough to be concerned about without having to fear assault and retaliation from colleagues and employers. Survivors must be believed without our personal lives being picked apart as part of vindictive, half-arsed investigations. When we are not believed, when our stories are mocked behind our backs and to our faces, when the stigma of being assaulted follows us from employer to employer, when the whispers about our character and obvious dog whistle for our promiscuity begin before we even arrive in a new city, it only works to destabilize and delegitimize the sector and the work we do. The humanitarian community must stop disappearing survivors or paying them off or blacklisting them from employment. Employers must actively work to prevent assault, not reward perpetrators with extended contracts and promotions. We, the women in this industry, will call you out when you harass us, when you assault us, and when you retaliate against us for daring to find such behavior unacceptable. We are only going to get louder, and it's only going to become more painful for you to ignore us. It's 2017. We know our rights, and we are coming for you. How do you think the sector should take action on this issue? Contact us with your thoughts and views at development at theguardian.com, with UAL violence and harassment in the subject line.